Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and we're back out at Duelist Den. And today, we've got a 1907 Savage pocket automatic pistol. So this is one of the early auto pistols. It's a semi-automatic. It has uh, a lot of features that were ahead of its time. And this pistol has a good bit of history that goes with it. So let's tell you about it, and then we'll do some shooting. Well, the Little Savage has a definite Art Deco look about it. Uh, you can almost see this in a Buck Rogers movie, you know, from the 20s. Um, but it really does have some neat features. First of all, what looks like a hammer up here is not a hammer at all. It's actually a striker. So, this was one of the very early striker-fired semi-automatic pistols. Also, you'll notice that there's no magazine release button or magazine release catch. The magazine release is right here. And basically, it's pretty ingenious. You press it with your finger, and out it comes. Now, you don't see that feature on any guns today because it is a little bit slow to use. And over time, you know, semi-auto uh, pistols have been refined to the point where you can pick up almost any one and you're going to see some features that are the same on every pistol. Uh, you're going to see the same sort of controls, same sort of slide releases, safeties are in roughly the same place, magazine release buttons are in the same place. But in the early days, uh, you know, early 1900s, when semi-autos were just being developed, that wasn't the case. Inventors were trying a lot of different things. And some of them worked out and some of them did not. But this... Uh, this deal right here, you can see, is not a hammer, but it's a striker. And that's exactly how it was fired. Now, it has very tiny rudimentary sights. Single action. Uh, the safety is in a very good position. Easy to use. Easy to take off, anyway. Right. So, it was pretty easy to, to, to bring into battery. Like I said, it's got a double stack magazine. This is a 32. They were the most common caliber made, but they also made some in 380. Now, the interesting thing is, this pistol was originally developed for the 1907 Army Trials to find a new 45 ACP semi-automatic pistol for the military. And as you are undoubtedly aware, the winner of those trials was this guy the Colt 1911. But what you may not realize is the pistol that came in second, and a very close second, and in fact, uh, the only reason Colt won, and it's a good reason, is that they continued to improve the design over the four years of the trial. Uh, because the Savage would have beat the original Colt pistol submitted. Uh, it's a much better design, but Colt kept refining the design until they came up with this and let's face it This is one of the greatest combat pistols ever made But it was neck and neck with this pistol and I'll show you what the actual submitted pistol looked like uh, Because obviously it was a lot bigger, but it pretty much looked just like this so I've seen the actual pistol in the uh, NRA satellite firearms museum in the Bass Pro headquarters in Springfield, Missouri and if you make the trek up there, it's definitely worth seeing that satellite museum, which is huge. Uh, and it has some great displays, and it has a display of all the 1907 trial pistols. And there are some real sweet-looking guns in there that didn't make the cut. Uh, so here's what this guy looks like. All right, so you're probably wondering, if it came in second... To this pistol, it must have been pretty darn good. So why didn't they market a 45 ACP version of this pistol? They'd already developed it. I mean, why not put it out on the civilian market? And uh, and the reasoning is actually pretty smart behind not doing that. What what Savage decided was if they were not going to win the military contract, 
then there would be very little market for a 45 ACP semi-automatic pistol among civilians because that whole big bore pistol market was pretty well covered by single action and double action revolvers which were still the king of uh, American pistoliers in the early 20th century and Savage didn't think they were going to be able to get enough market share away from revolvers to make it worth marketing a 45 ACP version of this gun uh, to civilians. So no point because Colt was going to have that market sold up, uh, sewed up. They'd have their military contracts and they would be selling the Army's gun to civilians and Savage figured they were going to own that market. But even though there was not a big market for big bore semi-automatic pistols, there was a huge market for pocket pistols. So what Savage intelligently did was shrunk their design down to 32 ACP and 380 and sell it to civilians as a pocket semi-automatic. And it was extremely popular. It was a very good seller for Savage. So I would say that they made the right decision. Well, some of you have pointed out that Evil Roy doesn't seem to get shot as often as he used to around here. And that's probably true. I mean, over the last four years, I've put, I don't know, 15, 20 pieces of steel up over here. So, you know, there's a lot of other targets to shoot at besides Evil Roy, and maybe I've been ignoring him a bit. So, let's take the Savage and see if we can make Evil Roy feel at home. I'll tell you what, considering that these sights are beyond minuscule, the Savage actually shoots pretty well. I mean, uh, we got Evil Roy drilled pretty much dead center. Let me, let me zoom in on him and, and show you what I'm talking about. Alright, there you go. I mean, that's not bad for those little tiny sights. This is not what you'd call a target gun, but uh, it would do the trick back in the day, no doubt about that. You know, the Savage's double stack magazine holds 10 rounds. And back in the days when most pocket revolvers only held five rounds, and even big bore revolvers held six, and you know, even like the Colt competitor pocket pistols only held six rounds, 10 rounds was a pretty good marketing uh, gimmick. So the slogan for the 1907 Savage pocket pistol was 10 rounds quick and it did deliver them. Well we're here in Swing City with the little 1907 Savage and let's see if we can make those plates spin. One bad thing about this is there is uh, no slide hold open feature. So, you know, when you're on your last round, it just closes. But, I'd say that we made that steel spin pretty good. You know, we don't usually think of little pocket semi-autos as being used by gunfighters of the Old West. Yet, that's exactly the gun that Jeff Milton used in his last gunfight. And if you're not familiar with Jeff Milton, he was the real deal. He started off as a Texas Ranger in the 1880s, and he did everything in between from being a town marshal of El Paso, a deputy sheriff in New Mexico, and one of the first customs and border patrol agents of the United States. He's often called the father of, uh, of the Border Patrol. So he continued his career from the 1880s up through the 1930s. But his last gunfight was on November 3rd, 1917 in Tombstone, Arizona. And he used a Savage 1907 and uh, let me tell you how it went down.
Well, on that fateful day in November, a wannabe bad man named Fred Koch decided to rob the bank in Tombstone, Arizona, using a shotgun. And during the course of that robbery, Fred killed the bank manager, uh, T.R. Brands. And that was not according to Frank's plan. He did not intend to shoot one of the most popular men in Tombstone. He just wanted the money. So he panicked and he ran. He took off on foot. So a little while after the bank robbery, Jeff Milton comes motoring into town in his stripped down Ford Model T that uh, he was using instead of horses to patrol his section of the border. And ascertained what happened, found out that uh, Fred Koch uh, had absconded on foot out in the desert. Jeff hopped back into his Model T, fired it up, and took off after him. And he picked up his tracks and he followed him in that motor car. And when he got to within a hundred yards of Fred, he yelled, HALT! But Fred didn't do it. Fred kept on going. So Jeff jumped out of the car, somewhere around a hundred yards distant, and one arm, because Jeff's left arm was totally shattered during the most famous gunfight of his life in Fairbanks, Arizona. So he was a one-armed shooting machine. He yelled, HALT! Fred kept going, and Jeff took aim and dropped him. Now as it turned out, Jeff shot him in the arm. So he captured him, threw him in the Model T, took him back to Tombstone where they locked him up. He stood trial. Of course, Jeff had to go and give his testimony. So the judge said to him, Jeff, were you just trying to wing him or were you shooting to kill? And Jeff said, I always shoot to kill. Uh, the judge laughed and said, then Mr. Koch is one of the luckiest men alive because usually when Jeff Milton shoots at somebody, the next event is a funeral, not a trial. And everybody laughed. And that was Jeff's last gunfight, and he did it using a Savage 1907, though his was in 380 caliber, not 32. Uh, but at 100 yards, even with these poor sights, he still managed to put one in him and bring his man back. And that's pretty impressive. Well, let's wrap up by giving you Fred Koch's view of the Savage 1907 Pocket Automatic.